What's good, y'all? The main man has been going through the motions, but I am here, still with the spin move. And we're back with Konosuma. Explosions in a beautiful world. Now, when it comes to Mega Me and the New Noon, it's clear that that's going to be a dynamic throughout the entire show because it's one of the Mega Me's huge dynamics in Konosuba. However, the way things are going, I'm kind of glad they kind of pushed the whole graduation thing because the way things are going with Mega Me and Yu right now, I feel it's run its course. And the funny thing about that is, I kind of put the blame on that one for on Yu Yu. The Yu Yu narrative, right? She wants to make friends and she's doing all this stuff. And that's like sure how friends, you know. It's one of those things where she thinks she knows, but I'll actually say another thing. I mean, MF Doom put it pretty clearly. The definition of friends. One, one like to socialize with, sympathize, and help. And that's about the size of it. So when you see something about somebody saying what friends are, and they try to give these examples of what friends do, blah, 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 it kind of just feel like they're missing point. Then again, this is Junior. Add on what I said last week, and yeah. So this episode, it kind of just, to me, put the cap on the whole in Junior and making me friends or rivals, blah, blah, blah. Because once again, I mean, Konosuba, we, we know how this kind of ends up, and the dynamics not going to change. It's just the way they went about it is definitely different than how they're going about it in school. And with the graduation coming up, when I first heard that in this episode, I was thinking, damn, this is episode four already. But after thinking about it, putting everything in consideration, yeah, it might be time to do something else. And here's another big qualm I had in this series so far. Nunu kind of stays the same when it comes to her needing friends or not having any friends. So these two girls running around, I didn't want to go ahead and just put the stamp on them kind of either being fake friends or just blah 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 and I still don't want to do that now after watching this episode however the seeds are there it's as genuine as they look well I guess well first and foremost it's anime of course they do it's kind of just like when Yu Yu goes about it the way she does and qualms about giving them money like that and then she ends up giving them money and then just panicking saying shit they ain't gotta pay them back because they're friends something she desperately wants easy to take advantage of that even if it's by accident and then a little bit of the words just said under their breaths as Union was leaving, blah blah blah, here and there. Didn't really help their case. However, if there's really somebody here that's either not completely. Mega Me is wishy washy as hell. Now, the thing about Mega Me, what we like, what like we've seen in Kona Super, like she kind of said in this show so far, she pretty much in the same boat with Union when it comes to friends. Except her way of going by is completely different. Almost to the point where she acts like she doesn't need them. Or rather doesn't want them. We know she needs friends once again because of Konosuba, but she's not actively pursuing that. However, her mentality of trying to get explosion magic going and not necessarily needing people to get that done. If she can't get people, she's just doing it on her own. I mean, what can you say? Counting people out from the jump is a negative trait. However, being prepared to do it on your own if you have to is a good trait to have. In fact, what I was saying, Mega Me back and forth throughout this entire episode really just played both sides. Starting off with an initial conversation with you, one moment she's like, you know, you don't have to give money to help them out. You can do it because friends also go through trials and tribulations together. Now, can rock, folks. Then, when it comes to the uh, concept of food, which, to be fair, Mega Me has a point here, but at the same time, it's like, then all of a sudden, you know, it's okay to give money for something like, come on, girl. Now I get it. It's not black and white. Like, when it comes to the whole thing with the friends and the food, like, if someone needs money for food, you gotta cons- get- share your food, yes. However, there's no harm in spotting the money to go buy some. Kinda depends, like, where you're at. Like, if you're in a cafeteria, the entire space of food is being handed out and they couldn't get no food, okay, then you share your food. If you're at a store or a restaurant and somebody just needs you to spot them $5, I mean, big deal, I can just do that. Instead of drilling too much on this, <laughs> it was kinda even worse for Megan Mean was her interaction with those two girls. Cause then it shows the part of Mega Man when it comes to her actually trying to be friends with you new or trying to be this certain type of person that can bust in to help people out. She just completely denies it. It's one thing to be wishy washy on both sides because of the, this is a gray area when it comes to helping friends. It's another thing just to be completely capped. You have helped you new out on your own volition multiple times in the series so far. And that one's not counting on the super. Now, that was advocate. She did have that vision at the beginning of the episode where she was depicting herself as the great hero, even though she just became the Demon King right afterwards. However, what's also said in anime when it comes to when you spend so much time around somebody, or blah blah blah, you become attached. But that being said, you've actively sticking behind a tree, actively seeing you new kind of get screwed over right in front of your face. 
and you have the opportunity to stop it. Like, take anime out of the equation there. Most people would just be like, hey, bro, fuck you think you're doing to the one person who actually talks to me at the school? Well, you knew and that girl with the big titties and they're gonna go to What's gonna happen to her after graduation? Not even like she needs to be the main character she is because, once again, we know she's not really appearing like Kona Suba, but the way Megami was interacting with her before, the way she hates her titties, the way she kept up with Megami for the most part because she was second place in Megami in the first place, you think she'll play a bigger role? Once again, yes, this is only episode four, but if they are graduating soon, and this whole series is not going to be spent out of school, then what's going to happen to everybody when they graduate? You're just going to be the only one who stick around? And that one love shooking guy. Now, just in case this analysis and my tired tone kind of just make it seem like I'm complaining, there was plenty of things about this episode I didn't like. Because for one, the way Megan Bean was kind of just uh, jumped on those two girls, the whole thing with that duck, and blah, blah, blah. Let's be real, that was kind of funny. Despite what I said about the concept between Megan Bean and Yu-Yu need to change, or at least switch it up, this has definitely showed more of Mega Man's character than Kuna Suba has ever would. That has what they would do. I never asked this. Did the same person who wrote Kuna Suba wrote this? And when I say that, what I mean is we pretty much think we can have a grasp on somebody's character outside of a backstory. It is mostly when you have openings like this and show somebody's backstory, blah blah blah, how they got to the point here. It kind of just really does to either reinforce that character to, or pretty much take the most loved character in the series and give them more screen time. In this case, it does both. However, I believe this is sheds more light on Mega Man as a person rather than just her character. While her character traits are sprinkled all over this, it shows light to her just through her relationship with Yun Yun, different sides of her, different sides of how she can sh- how specifically she shows compassion here and there, how she goes about doing this, this, and that to help people. And Devil's Advocate, it's not like we never seen that in Kona Suba, but first and foremost, you know, the main character in Kona Suba is freaking Kazuya and I said Kazuya, that's not taking. Keep saying his name wrong. Kazuma and Aqua. And it wasn't them where we kind of completely shifted and went to a whole other freaking arc with Dark Darkness. Yeah, that's a weird thing. Mega Man is a lot of people's favorite character in Kona Suba. When it comes to this, she kind of got the short end of the stick to now. So this unpackaging and repackaging of Mega Man's character, help being told to a, a character, a pointed character to her that she's already had there anyway just to build her up, aka Yunyu has been no less than helpful, which is pretty much, you know, that last scene of them two talking together in a nutshell. And yes, then Megami actually did a bit to Yunyu and she wants to do explosion magic. Also realizing that Megami wanted to graduate at the, not Megami, Yunyu wanted to graduate at the same time as Megami, so she kind of been holding back on some subjects and so they kind of can stay at that level. And this is the part where I say this, you want to be rivals with Megami just too much. Cause this is when you remind yourself of Kona Su- in the original Kona Suba, right? Mega Me doesn't exactly beat Yu Yu most of the time by skill. But that being said, it's kind of like, damn, if you gotta pull yourself back to become my rival. Man, fuck you. Unfortunately for Mega Me, though, contrary to what we've seen in this OBA, however, very much not contrary to the actual story, Mega Me ain't got hands. For the first time, Yu Yu beat her, tackled her to the ground. Which ain't that much of a W, it was Mega Me like half your size. I said I was gonna try to make my video shorter. I haven't done a short video on this series yet, anyways. And then, you know, there's the last part, of course, where those demons was flying above everybody right before she tried to choke out another duck. And then, realized that the house got attacked. Now, Megami's sister was all over the preview, so obviously she's alright. However, this is really that door opener to the next part of the series I'm talking about. Because after they talk about graduating soon, which knowing Megami is not going to take her long to do, there's now this dynamic. Because apparently there's also something to think about. There's going to be a whole past story outside of school to help get Mega Me to where she's at in the first place, let alone why she's wearing that red dress. Before she meets Cosmo, we got to remind ourselves she's also she's already well versed in explosion magic. Something she has yet to do one time in this OVA so far. Once again, I know it's only been four episodes, but this show is moving fast, so what can you say? So yeah, I think it's time for that next part. Let's get going. Write this video, leave a comment, let know what you think. Like this video for me, and I'll see y'all. Peace out, subscribe to this pinball.